This video is about to make spring lovers upset and winter lovers angry. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we're first going to talk about the big storm that's exiting up the northeast coast of the U.S. It's causing some big wind into New England and into the Canadian Maritimes. So we're going to focus on that first. Then, major pattern change coming down the pipeline. This was the pattern we so desperately wanted in the middle of winter. Now, as we're getting ready to wrap up the season, astronomically anyway, and start spring, we're going to get that bigger chill to arrive on the eastern two-thirds of the country. So stick around for that. I'm going to place the chapters in the description if you want to bounce around. And then we're going to give you that North American look, the U.S. and Canada look, the high-resolution future radar, and the temperatures over the next 48 to 72 hours if you want to stay updated on all things weather. Before we get into this video, please hit that subscribe button for me if you want to track all things weather with us as we get into severe weather season and eventually hurricane season. We got you covered. We have the conversation about weather on this channel all right you see the spiral up into new england and if you find this content helpful by the way please hit that thumbs up button it really does help us out a lot there's that spiral you see it right up in here towards uh, st john's into halifax into nova scotia into newfoundland uh, all up here that's our big upper low that continues to spiral and all through the mid-atlantic and into parts of the northeast we have big, big winds coming through, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts. And that is something that is going to continue today. These are the future wind gusts in miles per hour for parts of Southeast Canada and the Northeast United States. And you see we're stopping this at about four or five o'clock this evening. This is Eastern time. And you still see right along the coast from Philly all the way to Nantucket into uh, parts of Nova Scotia again, St. John. We're about 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Some places like Portsmouth, we are exceeding that as well. We're going to keep things very, very gusty through tonight. There's 2 a.m. So again, a very loud evening if the branches are rustling against each other there at 47 mile per hour wind gusts in Portland. And then eventually as we get into tomorrow afternoon, the wind starts to back off a little bit for Pennsylvania getting into New York. It is still very, very gusty though through the Canadian Maritimes and especially into Maine, breezy, especially into the higher elevations of New Hampshire. So that is that wind event being sparked by that big upper low that did reintroduce some cooler air back into the Northeast. What is coming though is going to be even colder relative to normal though this is the temperature outlook over the next 8 to 14 days and this right here highlights how the pattern is changing we're going to break all that down and just show you how the upper level pattern is going to respond to this or how this kind of correlates to that but big ridge builds out here big trough in the east again spring lovers obviously not what you want to see if you want some warmth that is going to be going away big time and winter lovers, again, you're going to be angry. You might be happy and rejoicing that we could get some snow out of this and certainly going to get some cold back. But it's too little too late, obviously, for extended winter as we are going through the middle and latter stages of March here. That's where the warmth is really going to build. So what is going on in the upper levels of our atmosphere? Here we go. We still have the jet stream. This is going to be as of March 11th. As of the day we are recording this video, jet stream still kind of oriented from west to east. It's pretty strong. We highlighted this back in February, in mid to late February, that we were likely going to see the Arctic Oscillation, which kind of measures the strength of the jet stream tank to negative. All my weather friends out there, you know when we get a negative Arctic Oscillation, that means the jet stream weakens and it buckles and then does this. It allows colder air to spill back in from Canada into the Arctic. It also creates a very stormy pattern because we get this ridge to build out here, trough out there, and then that's the storm track that happens. And then that's where you get the bigger nor'easter. So that is certainly even not out of the question that we do get a nice snowstorm in the northeast as this comes through. Again, temper expectations because the one thing you can't fight is the sun angle here as we get deeper into winter, in this case on the 21st spring but look for maybe some snow in this realm into the northeast so again when i say winter lovers are angry it's not because we might end up getting some wintry weather we certainly have that big possibility certainly the cold going to be there i think you're going to be angry though i'm certainly angry as a winter lover because this is the pattern that we wanted and this is what we keep on doing every single year it seems like we get this right pattern just as we get ready to move out of winter. We want this in January. We want this in February, not in late March transitioning into spring. So that's what we're going to be watching. Getting really focused on the 19th through about the 23rd, give or take, as we see the jet stream buckle and then bring in that colder air to the eastern two-thirds. Again, for us in the desert southwest, 
big chunk of high pressure builds there and that is where we really warm things back up all right want to give you the future look here over the next uh, 48 to 72 hours that was kind of the more longer range that's coming up in about 10 days that major pattern change we are going to see warmth surge in the short term there we go winnipeg 15 above cell uh, fahrenheit 10 below celsius again i have the celsius marker here for my canadian friends montreal will be one below celsius zero degrees celsius in toronto orlando we're back to the low 70s early tomorrow morning so this brief little chill that the east gets in we are going to get out a little bit again this is kind of uh, the long range i think i misspoke this is deeper into the long range um then I'm going to show you the short range. I wanted to show you the actual temperatures here. And then this is some of the colder air. You can see the white up there. That's where the colder stuff is, northwest of the Hudson Bay. And then you kind of see it filter through. So we're talking, this is 6 o'clock in the morning, Eastern time on March 21st. So we're talking 30s returning to Pittsburgh, 40s in Roanoke, upper 30s in New York City. And I mean, high temperatures in those days might struggle to get out of uh, the 30s. So again... It's going to be cold. It's certainly not frigid. It's cold relative to normal, and that's important. Again, you're fighting the sun angle, and there's not a ton of snow to the northwest to really insulate the air mass. All right, so now we're going to get into the high-resolution future radar and talk about the short term here. We are still dealing with that bigger system. We talked about this in our last video late last week that we would start to get pounded in the west. And there's some of the heavy rain in the lower elevations. The Cascades and parts of the Sierra is getting pounded again with some heavy snow. That is going to continue as well for the next few days. Denver, we're going to be up for some snow. You see some snow uh, to the west of Rapid City. Some rain in Rapid City. Bigger system tries to spiral there. But look at this. We still keep some snow into the Rockies. And then that bigger system slides through. In terms of the temperature, here we go. 7 o'clock on Tuesday, March 12th. So again, that's why I got... Uh, turned around i've had this at the end but same map this is now in the short term so before i was showing you the temperatures for the 20th 21st 19th range out there we're in the 50s in kansas city to start you see some of that warmth already starting to build back into the southeast look at this san antonio houston mid to upper 70s so a gorgeous afternoon a uh, comfortable afternoon anyway on march 12th this is going to be five o'clock we're pushing 80 in orlando uh, some of the cooler air out into the Pacific Northwest where we saw the snow in the higher elevations anyway. And then for us in Boise into Denver, back to the 30s, that'll help to fuel some of that snow that we just took a look at. Real big warmth then starts to build along the North Gulf Coast and into uh, parts of South Texas, San Antonio, back to the low 80s. We could be back to the middle 80s, closer to Brownsville, and then right along uh, the Mexican border, closer to the Gulf of Mexico. And then as we get out into uh, early on March 14th, this is where we have the cold, the warmth still surging up all through here. And you see that really build into the afternoon. Roanoke, we're getting back into the 70s. Remember, we saw highs uh, potentially in the 40s just one week from that point. So big time changes, these big swings. That is typical for March, of course, as we are, the atmosphere is trying to find itself. Are we settling into winter? Are we settling into spring? Is it arriving? And this is when we have the clash of the air masses, albeit the air not that frigid in Canada right now. So... Will we get a big storm? That's a question. The pressure gradient may not be maximized enough, but the one thing does look like we are going to be about 20-ish degrees below normal in the northeast, more like 10 to 15 degrees below normal in parts of the southeast, maybe even 15 to 20, kind of right in here. That's where the core of this next cold air mass is going to focus. We've been talking about this since February, and we are, of course, going to highlight this all the way until it settles in. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. Also, I'd love to know what the weather is doing right now, where you're tuning in from. Post that in the comments for me so we can continue this weather conversation. Hit that subscribe button if you want to hang out and join this weather community, and we will catch you next time.